Who was Reinhard Heydrich? And what was his role in the Nazi regime? Let's find out in today's episode of the History Chronicles. Today's History Chronicle focuses on the life of Reinhard Heydrich, one of the most ruthless men of the Nazi regime. Reinhard Heydrich was born on the 7th of March 1904 in the town of Halle in eastern central Germany to Elizabeth and Richard Heydrich. His family was wealthy and his father a noted composer and singer. His father had a deep love of Germany, a value that was instilled into his children as well as a love of music. The family's prosperity was shattered by the First World War, which sent the German economy into a tailspin, resulting in economic hardship for the Heydrich family as well as millions of other Germans. Furthermore, following Germany's defeat in 1918 to the Allies, the nation became politically polarised, resulting in radical leftist and right groups seeking to control the nation through violence. One of the right-wing groups that would impact Heydrich were the Freikorps. The Freikorps were paramilitary groups consisting largely of former soldiers who had returned from the Western Front, as well as right-wing nationalists. In 1919, when Reinhard Heydrich was aged 15, skirmishes broke out in his hometown between the Communists and Freikorps groups. The Communist takeover prompted Heydrich to join the local Freikorps unit who wrestled back control of the town from the Communists. Meanwhile, the discontent in Germany expanded as the country continued to suffer from widespread food shortages, unemployment and hyperinflation. For most Germans, the prospects of economic prosperity looked grim and bleak. Heydrich avoided the economic panic by joining the German Navy in 1922 as a cadet. He did well in training and two years later was promoted to midshipman. He was sent to officer school and was made an ensign in 1924. Following his graduation, he was assigned to serve on the battleship Schleswig-Holstein. He was made a sub-lieutenant in 1928. His growing status, as well as his striking appearance, led to various love affairs with a number of women. One of these women would change the trajectory of his life. Lena van Osten, who was a member of the National Socialist German Workers' Party, or Nazi Party, came to have an inordinate impact on his political career. The two became engaged, but a former lover's father destroyed Heydrich's naval career by stating that Heydrich had promised his hand in marriage to his daughter and then deserted her. Heydrich was charged with conduct unbefitting of an officer and gentleman and was dismissed from the German Navy in April of 1931. Lena did not desert him, and they were then married in December of 1931 and would go on to have four children during their time together. While Heydrich's career nosedived, Germany was experiencing radical changes with the growth of the Nazi party. The Nazis had begun to expand their control of the German government and were gaining greater popularity. One component of the Nazi party was the Schutzstaffel, or SS. This group had been formed in 1925 as a kind of close protection or bodyguard unit to Adolf Hitler, but had remained relatively unimportant until 1929 when Heinrich Himmler, a former chicken farmer from Munich, was appointed to become a Reichsführer SS. Himmler shared Adolf Hitler's beliefs in the superiority of the Germanic peoples, but in many ways was even more fanatical than Hitler, sought to make the Nazi dream of a pure Aryan master race a reality by any means possible. This led him to expand the organisation, and so in 1931 Himmler ordered the creation of a new SS intelligence unit and started interviewing candidates to run it for him. Lena Heydrich persuaded Reinhard Heydrich to join the Nazi party in the summer of 1931. Six weeks later he joined the SS. Lena was then able to get her husband an interview with Himmler, who was so impressed with Heydrich that he was made the head of the SS intelligence unit. Heydrich threw himself into his new role, setting up intelligence networks which were used to obtain information on Nazi opponents and also to blackmail officials. His reputation and salary grew as his competence became clear. However, allegations were made against him regarding his rumoured Jewish ancestry, prompting a full internal investigation by the Nazi party. Although he passed the Nazis' scrutiny, rumours would continue long after the investigation was closed. In 1932, Himmler appointed Heydrich to be the head of the newly renamed and reorganised SS security service called the SD, or Sicherheitsdienst, which in a few months took control of regional police forces. A year later, on the 30th of January 1933, Adolf Hitler was made Chancellor of Germany. However, Heydrich's SS faced competition from the Gestapo, or secret police, and the Sturmabteilung, or SA, 
which was the paramilitary arm of the Nazi party under its leader, Ernst Röhm. Luckily for Heydrich, the SA had grown unwieldy and uncontrollable, leading to calls within the party for the SA to be removed. It also prompted Hitler to reorganise his secret police, allowing Heydrich to rise as head of the Gestapo in 1934. Himmler and Heydrich positioned the SS and Gestapo firmly behind Hitler, whilst Ernst Röhm and the SA began to fight with Hitler and insult him in public. This effectively decided Röhm's fate in the Führer's eyes. Hitler ordered his lieutenant, Hermann Göring, to draw up a list of persons both inside and outside the Nazi party who were to be eliminated. Göring crafted a plan called Operation Hummingbird. Hummingbird commenced on the 30th of June 1934, when leading members of the SA, including Ernst Röhm, were arrested and shortly afterwards killed, along with hundreds of other political and personal enemies of the Nazi hierarchy. This plan was carried out to perfection by Himmler and Heydrich, who were placed in charge of the operation. This purge appeased the German army and the political establishment who had pressured Hitler to act against the SA and was also beneficial to him as he had successfully liquidated his enemies throughout Germany and forced his followers, especially the SS, to prove their loyalty by taking part in the purge. Himmler and Heydrich had also emerged from 1934 as two of Nazi Germany's most powerful men, and they then moved to crush any further opposition amongst the population to appease Hitler and further increase their own power. By 1936, the duo had gained control of all secret police operations in the nation. Heydrich now only took orders from Himmler and Hitler, and his ability as a planner and leader were further evidenced by his planning of the 1936 Berlin Olympics. During this period, Heydrich also continued to participate in forcing Jews from German territories. Following the games, Hitler turned his attention to the unification of Germany with his homeland, Austria. Heydrich participated in the events as he ordered his agents to push the populace to support the Führer. On the 12th of March 1938, Hitler's forces occupied Austria and annexed the state. Although it appeared to be popular, in reality, Heydrich's agents were brutally suppressing any dissent on the matter behind the scenes. To help with the subjugation of the country, Heydrich had also implemented the formation of special units of SS and Gestapo operatives named Einsatzkommando who were tasked with securing public buildings and government officials. This unit would later be reorganised into the dreaded Einsatzgruppen, who were responsible for the subjugation and liquidation of undesirable elements behind German lines during Hitler's forthcoming invasions. Near the end of November, Heydrich helped lead the retaliation for the murder of German diplomat Ernst von Rath by a Jewish refugee. Following which, a speech by Propaganda Minister Joseph Goebbels stated that demonstrations against the assassination would not be organised by the Nazi government, but it would also not hamper any if they were to arise. This led to the Kristallnacht, or Night of Broken Glass. This event was a series of riots against Jews on the nights of the 9th and 10th of November. Heydrich aided the rioters by instructing his police forces to do nothing. The night was an omen of future violence against the Jewish population. Meanwhile, Hitler had managed to gain control of all of Czechoslovakia by the spring of 1939. Once again, Heydrich's Gestapo and SS swept Czechoslovakia, clearing it of anyone deemed to be a threat to Hitler's rule. Once again, he demonstrated his absolute loyalty to Hitler and his violent inclinations. Hitler turned his attention to Poland in 1939 following the annexation of Czechoslovakia. He turned to Himmler and Heydrich to create a justification for the invasion of Poland. The men devised a scheme of faking an attack on a German radio station by the Polish army. However, the Polish army was in reality a number of Gestapo prisoners dressed in Polish army uniforms who were to be shot after a fake radio broadcast was sent out from the station claiming it was under attack. The plan seemed foolproof until the broadcasting power of the transmitter wasn't strong enough to be heard at long distance, resulting in few hearing of the attack. This was soon overshadowed by the German army's full-scale invasion of Poland, which began a day later on the 1st of September 1939, prompting France and Britain to declare war on Germany. Heydrich sent in his newly renamed Einsatzgruppen following the invasion. The group quickly silenced opposition and began a reign of terror in the country. Heydrich also ordered the segregation of the Polish Jew population in ghettos in Poland cities, leading to the deaths of tens of thousands of Jews due to starvation and disease. 
By 1940, Heydrich continued to gain more power, bringing all security forces under his control and effectively becoming one of the most dangerous men in Europe. His forces soon followed Hitler's armies into France, Belgium, Holland, Denmark and Norway. In each of these territories, Heydrich implemented a plan of rounding up Jews and political enemies of the state to make the SS the key to Hitler's domestic control. After the failure to force the British into submission by the end of 1940, Hitler turned his attention to the Soviet Union and ordered the German armed forces, as well as the SS, to prepare for its invasion in 1941. Heydrich ordered his men into the conquered territories of Russia and began a ruthless campaign against the Russian and Jewish population. It has been estimated that during Hitler's invasion of Russia, over two million Jews were killed by the SS Einsatzgruppen. These men at times killed entire populations or settlements, including women and children, with no reason or trial. For example, at Babi Yar near Kiev in September of 1941, over 33,000 people were murdered in two days alone. Heydrich was determined to support the war effort and began flying combat missions with the Luftwaffe in Russia. His career as a pilot was cut short after he crashed his plane behind enemy lines in June of 1941. Evading Soviet troops, he returned safely to German lines but was forbidden to fly combat missions again by Himmler. Heydrich's attentions were diverted as strikes in Czechoslovakia increased due to Germany's demand for greater military production. Heydrich was appointed Deputy Reich Protector of Bohemia and Moravia in September of 1941 and was tasked with crushing Czech resistance and restoring arms production. He did so by brutally suppressing strikes and by offering more financial incentives to work. However, Heydrich would soon be involved in one of the Nazi regime's darkest plots of the war. Heydrich had been appointed by Hitler, Goering and Himmler to take charge of the final solution for a plan to rid German-controlled territories of their Jewish inhabitants. Heydrich had already begun tentative plans when he called for a meeting of German leadership to determine how to implement the destruction of the Jews. This conference was held in Berlin at Wannsee on the 20th of January 1942. During the discussions, Heydrich outlined his plans in which occupied Europe's 11 million strong Jewish population was to be transported across the continent from west to east and evacuated. Historians agree that the word evacuated was a cover word for killed. By the spring of 1942, permanent gas chambers had been constructed at death camps such as Auschwitz, Birkenau and Treblinka, amongst others where over the coming years nearly two million people, including Jews, homosexuals, political prisoners and gypsies, were gassed and incinerated. These, along with other concentration camps, death camps and the actions of Heydrich and Himmler's Einsatzgruppen, resulted by 1945 in the deaths of over six million Jews and possibly up to 17 million persons in total if prisoners of war and political prisoners are included. Heydrich was at the peak of his career in 1942. His brutality and ruthlessness made him one of Nazi Germany's most powerful men. This position made him a target for resistance forces, including the exiled Czechoslovakian government. In 1941, Czech operatives were dropped in the country and made their way to Prague using the Czech underground movement. These men prepared for the right moment to assassinate the arrogant SS commander. Heydrich, despite living in the capital of an occupied country, had maintained a casual attitude toward his personal security. He often drove from his villa in the suburbs of Prague into the city centre in an open-topped Mercedes with only his driver to protect him. By April 1942, the operatives had learned most of Heydrich's routines and the plan was set into motion on the 27th of May 1942. At a remote tram stop near Prague, Heydrich's car was ambushed by three Czech agents. Their initial attack failed, but Heydrich, in his arrogance, ordered his driver to stop the car so that he could shoot the failed assassins. This mistake cost him his life, as one of the agents lobbed a grenade towards the car. Though the grenade landed outside the vehicle, the shrapnel from the grenade and the car hit Heydrich's side. The Czech agents fled, leaving Heydrich slumped on the floor of his damaged vehicle. He was rushed to hospital, where doctors attempted to remove the dozens of grenade and car fragments. After treatment, he was allowed to return home, seemingly fine. A week later, Heydrich collapsed while eating lunch. He went into a coma and died early the morning of the 4th of June 1942 at the age of 38. 
An autopsy concluded that he had died of sepsis, possibly caused by the horsehair stuffing of the seats in his car entering his body during the grenade explosion, but given the relatively primitive medical technology of the time, the exact cause of death is not known for certain. Hitler and his Nazi hierarchy were incandescent with rage at Heydrich's assassination and ordered severe and brutal reprisals to be carried out as revenge for his death. The whole village of Ladice, including women and children, were massacred by the SS as part of the retaliation. The Czech resistance was decimated in the following months, curbing future resistance efforts. Heydrich was given a lavish state funeral by the Nazi regime and was buried with full military honours in Berlin. The legacy of Heydrich continued throughout the war. As SS agents attempted to wipe out the Polish Jewish population, they named the operation Reinhardt. He was arguably one of the most capable, ruthless and cold-hearted members of the Nazi elite. Reinhard Heydrich was responsible for the masterminding and instigating of the details of the Holocaust, and the responsibility for its planning was delegated to him by Hitler and Himmler. His actions afforded him the status as one of the most calculating and cold villains in global history. You have been watching the History Chronicles. We'd love to know what you think of Reinhard Heydrich. Please let us know below, and if you enjoyed our video, please give us a like and subscribe. It really helps us out. Also, if you'd like to support our work going forward, please visit our Patreon page, and we look forward to seeing you again on the next episode of the History Chronicles.